the most times oh, that they that's great so thank you for coming out once again well, thanks for having me again so before we actually start this is article 41 now there are a couple changes from um town council which you might not even have seen i do i do oh, you see? they, uh, very they were very minor and they, they, minor. they were they were they were um simply it's uh, a couple of typos so well no they're short or, i don't know i didn't see any typos i saw some they're not much of a change but an or an or as opposed to an is right. and an in the is. very first paragraph after the first marijuana there's an or that should be and mm -hmm. and you're then, talking in the right to see if the town will vote yes. that one okay and then under 8.71 definitions that last clause as defined in should be crossed out did you have that one Chief? Yes. That, okay, that's all I had. I um, so can I just ask that clarify as defining general watch all the way through the word amended or just yes. as a stop after? Okay. So it's a period after tinctures. tinctures. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So that's it for, I mean, that's all the changes. So anyway, so Chief, do you want to go through our questions? I don't know. Oh, well, sure. Um, <coughs> I'd be happy to answer. Um, anything that you have regarding the public safety drones? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, we're, we're paying come attention. <laughs> come on, I thought, it, right, no, it was, right I thought we were picking up where we left off. <laughs> you should have went with simonition. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but we voted for the drones. Uh, we, oh, well, thank you for that. I didn't know that. Oh, you just did? now, no. Um, it wasn't I did get the list unanimous, of, but we did vote uh, for Well, it. I thank you. And um, I did get the list of the questions. I'd be happy to entertain those questions as well as um, any others that may come up and um, try to hope to provide some understanding of uh, the proposal before you with respect to the bylaw, the addition of a new bylaw. Okay. Uh, of course, I don't have the questions in front of me. Well, I, I do if you, you do. don't Good. mind. One of the first questions was what was the reason for... What was the reason or the public policy for this bylaw? And it came about as we were, as a community, gearing up to deal with the onset of the medical marijuana in our communities, the legalization of marijuana, not just in 2012, but in 2016 as well. And I was asked by the previous administration to look into the possibility and was one of my goals from last year to develop a work with town council to come up with a social consumption bylaw or public consumption bylaw for marijuana and town council we there was a police chiefs association in massachusetts had a couple of sample policies from everett and i believe malden that were the boilerplate for other communities within the state that we that was suggested that we utilize that had been successfully approved by the attorney general's office so that was the template that our town council used our town council helped and developed the bylaw proposal that's before you for accomplishing that goal so that's how that came about it was something that was requested that was my me. question so um, I just I guess um, I understand what the goal was and why you did it but what's public policy behind it given that we already have laws in place um, to deal with this issue my my thought is it's local control just to get just to have local enforcement authority as opposed to just re, uh, relying uh, purely on on the state statutes okay so if some somebody were to violate one of these they would also be violating the state statutes correct correct they could they they could however we would have the option of charging them with the state statute or with the bylaw violation and they're both done through the 21D process, the um, the bylaw citation process, it, it, well, both on the state level, the state wants the municipality is doing it through the through the same process. So we'd be doing it either way, except for when if the town was to adopt this bylaw, the, I believe that the fines would come back all to the community if there were any fines levied. So would it be a one or the other, or is there potential for somebody to? In some instances, it, it, from uh, my understanding, in some instances, it could be the both. It could be How both. How do you determine when to charge somebody with both versus one or the I other? Would leave, that? I don't know that there's, a, there's an, uh, a rock solid answer to that, making that determination. I think that determination would be left to the officers in the field and given the circumstances surrounding the incident that led them to having to issue a citation in the first place. Okay, because I mean, I don't see anything that would differentiate 
like if it was a more egregious incident, how that would be defined to make a decision to either slap somebody with both or well, with one I, or again, other. I, I think I would leave that up to the officers that would be in the process of enforcing the bylaw as opposed to giving an answer as to why one would be used as opposed to the other. Okay. Thank and you. I think, and what happened was the, the um, 94G gave us the authorization as a community to establish more stringent rules and regulations with respect to uh, public consumption. And I think that that was what we did here with the uh, bylaw proposal. So how did you become more stringent? With the, the fines are, are stricter. And again, it gives us the local control where we could, we, we, if we write a citation for the town of Sturbridge, it's a town of Sturbridge violation. And also within, within the state statutes for bylaws, if, you know, I'm just gonna pass on that for right now until I can get, I, until I get a better footing on my, uh, my opinion of that. So I think that that, I, I think that we can, we can also restrict more areas, more public areas and, and public buildings, public buildings where you're prohibited from smoking tobacco or having tobacco products. Um, and also we can designate areas within our community that may not be all public as opposed to, um, we, and I think that's the way that we can make it stricter is if we have areas that may not be accessible to the public but under town control, that we can restrict that through the social, the social consumption bylaw. I have a further just enforcement question. So, you know, in addition to our local force, state and environmental police also have authority in Sturbridge, so would they be able to? The, um, they would be able to, however, um, Again, I can't speak for the officers. It's, a, it's an officer discretion. And what, what do they choose to do? Do they choose to write them a $100 citation under the specific violation of that particular section of law, of state law, or do they choose to charge them under the violation of the uh, bylaw, the Sturbridge bylaw, if they're even aware of it and what it is and to cite it? Um, they would, it would be um, in many of our other bylaws, um, all police officers have the authority to enforce them, but most times they defer to the state level of, um, of charges. Chief, is there, when it comes to public intoxication or uh, uh, driving under the influence, is there a local bylaw as well as a state? In other words, would Article 41, if it's voted in, by the, at the annual town meeting, would it basically parallel an alcohol type of situation? I don't believe so. This is just for the consumption of it. This has nothing to do with motor vehicle operation. Well, I, I, yeah, I wasn't clear, I'm sorry. Um, when it comes to, I'll call it improper uh, uh, drinking in public, mm -hmm. is there a, there is a state law, yes? Uh, that could, you, you could arrest somebody under a state law. I, I think I'm missing the imp well, impro if okay. somebody's if somebody's create again um, if somebody's drinking in public in Sturbridge I mean, if we're, we're going to talk about alcohol and they're causing a disturbance there's a set there's certainly the breach of the peace uh, uh, statutes that apply to that and then and, and state statutes would apply to any breach of the peace um, regardless of what is causing it. <laughs> You have every reason to be uncertain as to what yeah. I'm talking about because you mean, not you, being clear. Do you mean is, open container law sure. in a car? I'm just trying to find out if there is a local, is there a bylaw that um, is the local version of the state law when it comes to alcohol where the officer has discretion as to which or even both no, be, and I, from that aspect of, of for out for the alcohol comparison to this, um, I don't think that we have anything similar to this on the alcohol side of it. We we rely on state law for that. Okay, thank you. Now I understand. Okay. So, so okay. we never we never we never took the time to modify our bylaws with respect to that. 
and it's in, and something that predated me again this uh, <laughs> with the changes in the law and with legalization of marijuana this uh, again the town had approached and Okay, now, not, not, thank you. You actually have answered it, even though nobody. So, so I, guess, I guess to continue on that, if someone were um, attending an event on the common mm -hmm. and having a beer or a glass of wine, there, there's no. You don't have a bylaw prohibiting that. No, no we do but not. But this bylaw would, would pre prevent prohibit. somebody from smoking marijuana in the, say, at the next to the, those people with the wine. Gotcha. Um, and of someone who's drinking the excess and, and disturbing the peace, you have means That's of completely enforcing different, that. Right. But the, that the, the act of actually different. consuming the alcohol is right. not, not a, a violation here. Correct. Yep. And if this bylaw didn't go through, it's are your hands tied? You don't have any enforcement? Oh, no. We, we, rely, we would rely on the state laws. The which, state. So which, this which is just a lot of what you see law. here is it duplicates what state laws are in existence, again, but it, it puts more local control on it, and the fines that are issued come back to the community. Is tobacco smoking allowed on the common? I don't know if um, we as a community have prohibited that, prohibited that, but the tobacco law is a rather weak. Yeah, well, I you know. know but... While there's, there's no smoking or possession of tobacco products on school grounds, there's no enforcement component to it. There's no penalty for that. It's illegal, but there's no fine or punishment attached to it. So. Um, I, know, I, I think I almost got beat up. You know, once and at I, a don't know, game, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if fun. I don't know if the town uh, it, right now, off the top of my head, without researching, if the town had designated all public properties smoke-free so. at some point. Then I may not be aware of. I know that uh, all oh. the buildings are smoke-free. I don't know if all the I, town properties. Yeah, are. I, I thought the prior board of health agent was working on tightening up some of those smoking regulations before she had left. So, mm. yeah, that I don't. Oh, that's right. The board of health can make their own regulation. Chief, could you clarify a bit earlier? You said that this um, bylaw may give you options to further restrict public consumption by designating certain areas or classifying certain areas. Could you elaborate on that? Well, uh, where we, with the, if the town c could, I guess we'd have to get into what the proper definition of a public place is. Well, I guess my question is that does this specific bylaw enable you? And it doesn't sound like there's any um, process to do that with this particular article. Would that be a no? And, and, and we could get we could make it stricter where we could say there's, you can't possess marijuana in a public building. You can't whether it's a town hall, center office building, school, senior center, DPW. You can't possess. You know, we could make it even stricter and say you can't even possess it in those buildings. This is just a public consumption bylaw. So really does, it really doesn't expand much more. That's why it's so short. I mean, it really doesn't expand much more into it than... But there is a state law that says, and I'll read it, no person shall consume marijuana in a public place or smoke marijuana where smoking tobacco is prohibited. Well, I guess, yeah. So I think my, my point is if we decided for some reason we did want to restrict, say, the library parking lot, for example, uh, as a no smoking zone. As, as yeah, no as a no smoking, smoking area. That that could be its own separate article would necessarily Correct. have to pass this in order to to later do Correct. something like that. Correct. Okay. So, so I think what you're saying is uh, article E or six. This is e merely about public consumption for consuming marijuana in, in the public. Well eight point seven two talks about a, a, a list of places, bridges, parks, playgrounds, mm -hmm. parking lots under the control of the town of Sturbridge, uh, and, and other places where it'd be um, Illegal to con to publicly consume, and you have the right to enforce this this, this bylaw. That I think what you're saying is, if we wanted to add other locations, we're just amending a bylaw through a town meeting vote, versus um, requiring state action to, to limit those other places within within the town. As long as we're not inconsistent with what state law uh, where state law allows uh, consumption. Correct. And again, this is has been reviewed and accept and the town council has said that this is a good model for us if we want to adopt such a pol such a, a policy or bylaw for the community Kevin? so my first question when i read this is you know right it from talks about marijuana products anything made from an extract from marijuana or other greeting other ingredients well, you know, that this THC, which is the active component in this CBD, mm -hmm. that's also <coughs> coming from marijuana. Do you see this 
basically excluding both? I mean, there were already businesses with CBD products for sale in town. Well, if, if it's listed in 94G Section 1, then it would be prohibited. If it's not listed there, then it wouldn't be. Uh, when you're talking about the, the CBD oils, I think that you're talking about the hemp derivative or that less than a certain percentage. I think it's 0 0.03, 0 0.003 percent THC, which I believe is legal in Massachusetts and it falls under a completely separate act that has to do with farming, et cetera. Um, it, it's, no, it's not contained in 94G, so I don't think that would be affected by it. Okay. Do you, do you, do you, does your law kind of, do you have that 94G? This isn't 94G, but oh. we can I just didn't, I just didn't know. I, because, you I mean, like I say, there's already businesses selling it. Right. And, I mean, if this all of a sudden restricts it because we're saying any product that comes, you know, from but it, said, but it says any product as uh, that for consumption, including edibles, products, beverages, topical products, ointments, oils, and tinctures, as defined in 94G Section 1. No, that's been stricken. That's not in the, the bylaw anymore. So if, if, but I'm saying is if it's in 94G Section 1 is defined, mm -hmm. then it would be prohibited by this bylaw. Yeah. That's, that's so my point. What I'm saying is uh, it, that the, those, the CDB, uh, the hemp, I don't believe is restricted under under that particular section of law. I, I didn't print that part. Okay. But I can look it up though. I'm yeah. looking But up. you know, these are legal questions that should be uh, brought before town council. Uh, you know, well, no, and, and you I, actually set the policy about how it's enforced. Well, so not you, how you it's can tell your own. But not how it's interpreted. And it says, as defined in 94G section one, as may be amended. So as that changes, and things are added or deleted from it, so does the bylaw. I think Kathy just said the, that reference that section was stricken. No, actually, it's there in the front. It's it's stricken the second time. Stricken it's it's it, oh, yeah, because it's, it's redundant. Well, it actually stricken. says 94C section one first at the top. That's for marijuana. Oh, okay. for marijuana, but there's not no reference for marijuana products. No. Okay. So you you've um, said a couple of times it's, it's up to your officers to m interpret how to. Um, apply this or, or charge under this. Um, uh, you, you also mentioned leave the legal interpretation to the town council there. So is there going to be some, if this were to go into effect, do your officers know what they can and cannot do under this or is it going to be? Well, it's not in effect so they haven't been trained for it. So but you're going to need I would, some training. They would be if, trained. If they would understand that there would be a bylaw in place that speaks to this. So they have an option. You know, believe it or not, we do have bylaws for speeding violations that are rarely utilized, but there are bylaws for speeding violations. The fines are very small, but are, there's an option to write a speeding ticket through a bylaw pr uh, process. Uh, and if the officer chooses to utilize that, they can, or they can utilize this, the state law for it. There's a, there's a lot of bylaws that we have for traffic enforcement and other enforcement options that do mirror or parallel state law. When the name, and the fines may be stricter in some instances, and they may not in others. Would your officers be able to enforce this on a boat on the water? Once it's on the water, since it's technically not owned by Sturbridge? Um, no, they would. Of course, they would, because even though the the body of water isn't, it's still public to the town of Sturbridge. And if if is any place that we have enforcement authority in the community, we could enforce this. Okay. This right, definition of marijuana products here is what is now in 94G section one. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's like you said, one section says, right, marijuana shall be marijuana defined as section 94C, and the part we struck out was 94G, right? Mm -hmm. But that is actually what that definition that's there is what's in 94G1. I don't know about so, 94C. Well, it kind of sounded like C was for the definition of marijuana, oh, G no, was for the definition. Oh. No, they both have definition. Have 94C? Yeah, I'm looking it up now. It's just. I got the definition of bread, so I was like, wait a minute, that couldn't be right. <laughs> Andy for G, Section 1 definitions. Yeah, Chief, there's That's what a marijuana the product is in there, the I don't know. Tincture. Okay. Consumer. So it defines hemp, it defines marijuana, all parts of any plant the of the genus cannabis not expected, accepted below, and whether growing or not, the seed thereof 
resin extracted from any part of the plant in every compound, manufacturer, or salt derivative mixture or preparation of the plant, its seeds or resin, including THC as defined in Section 1 of Chapter 93C of the General Law is provided that marijuana shall not include. So we'd have to check what they say is not included. Okay. But it doesn't specifically say um, CBD there. So it is a little bit unclear. All right. What was the next question, Chief? I'm sorry, I left my I think other you, I pad think there was a, I think there was office. quite a few of the following questions that were answered. The town allows for public consumption of alcohol, why not marijuana? I think the thought process was to allow alcohol, why not marijuana? Smoking is objectionable. Uh, should in certain public places outside areas may be smoke free, such as a town common, so designation as smoke free areas. Uh, well, again, I don't think that that designation is necessary when it is considered public and somebody's consuming in the public. And it talks about laws for the use of open containers with respect to marijuana. Do we need another additional layer to this bylaw? Again, you, we're going back to the local control and the, and the stricter fines and or that are in the town bylaws as opposed to the state bylaws where the town, the state is a $500 fine, the town bylaw would still be a $300 fine. On the that, violation. I know we've talked about it amongst ourselves. How are you going to figure out open container for a marijuana product when so much of it is can be? Well, the um, I think that the I think that the open container law spells that out for us already, and I think that we would use the standards that are established in that particular section of law. Well, so the one of it says the seal is broken, but if you had, I think that was. Part of my question: If you had it in a, I like you. a Tupperware container. Well, it says, it says accordingly. Any police officer who observes a driver, or passenger smoking or consuming marijuana or marijuana products in a motor vehicle may lawfully effectuate a stop, initiate a threshold inquiry in order to identify the parties and issue a citation. Marijuana that is in a sealed container, or which is secured in a vehicle, which is in a sealed container. Now, where you're getting with those containers, like a Tupperware container, it has to be sealed in a trunk or your glove box. So that's where it would have to be? Yeah. And those, then it would not be subjected to this to the civil penalties, yes. But if it was sitting on your back seat? If it was sitting, it'd be an open container. Even though, really? Right, and it, no no different than if there was a, a capped yeah. bottle of wine that you were going to, to the say, neighbor's house with. Of, if you had it in your trunk, trunk, you'd be fine, but if you had it in your back seat, it'd be an open container. And, it, it, you know, I mean, that's just the way that the, the law is established because you, probably the people that, um, you know, there's a reason why it's that way. And well, I mean, I know the, the thing with the alcohol was amended recently if you were bringing wine home from a, but a restaurant, to, and it, right. there's certain rules. And, and right, so but, but it's it already still open, but it has to be in your trunk. You correct, know? correct. I, I thought it had to, you could have it inside your car as long as it was in the sealed bag. As long as it's in a sealed bag, you can have sealed it in bag, yeah. So why does the why does the pot have to? So be then, why in? wouldn't that that would be consistent with the sealed container with a sealed bag? Right. Mm. That was that was my next question. But but as of now, Chief, there is no town bylaw for an open container of alcohol. Correct. Correct. No, not a town bylaw for it. No. So there is right. state law. There, right. State there is state law. law. So, uh, is there? Can you explain why we might have different treatment for alcohol versus marijuana when they're both? Now legal in Massachusetts. My personal opinion, and just my personal opinion, is because the alcohol laws outdate all of us here, and marijuana just became legal. So we are going to try to address it um, from the standpoint of how public perception is of marijuana. We were all brought up to taught it and taught that it was bad, that it wasn't legal, it was illegal, and that it was not good for us. And so therefore, when it got legalized, then people needed to know, well, what do we do now? Now that it's legal, what are we gonna do if somebody's smoking a joint on the town common next to me while I'm trying to listen to a show? And how do we respond to that? And we are one of the very few communities in the Commonwealth that doesn't have an open container law. Uh, most communities do. We don't, and the town's never had an appetite for it. I've never been approached and asked to research that. 
However, I was asked to research this, and I think personally it is because of the newness of it and nothing more and wanting to have some kind of control over it. And uh, although the, the, the Cannabis Control Commission, they did an outstanding job in establishing what the appropriate civil and, and community and quality of life issues were that were all taken care of with the public consumption restrictions that are there, they still left the communities the option to make things stricter or make the fines steeper and give that option to the community so that the communities would have some kind of say in the enforcement aspect of the social consumption of marijuana. And that would be my personal opinion of it. If, if, in, if, if someone was at the common, we keep using this together, and you know, went up to one of your offices and complained about someone having wine and beer and drinking it in public, would your officer be able to enforce the open container law against them at the state level? You know, at the state level of Is the there, statute? Um, no, there's no open container law at the state level. Even for, for alcohol at all? Not unless it's in a motor vehicle, no. Yeah, the open container law just references uh, vehicles for alcohol oh, okay. and state law. And again, it all, comes, it all comes down to discretion. It all comes down to the actions of the person, the consumer, and the actions of the officer that's observing it and, and uh, the quality of life issue that, of the person that may be affected or adversely affected by the smoke. Again, um, it's no different than, uh, than uh, noise ordinances, noise bylaws, barking dog bylaws. And you know, some people may not be bothered by barking dogs and could sleep all night through it. Others couldn't stand five or 10 minutes of barking and want to have something done and want to have somebody charged for it mm -hmm. because a dog's barking at 7.30 in the morning and not 10 o'clock at night. So, and you know, or that there's a band playing too loud at somebody, at, you know, at somebody's house or on the town common. The chief, just to, to clarify, this isn't limited to smoking products. This could also apply to edibles. It could, according to the definition here, yes, it would. But that obviously is going to be a little more difficult for the enforcement aspect of it. Is you can, if you've done any research on the right. edibles, it's going to be, it's going to be really difficult for the officers to try to enforce that. And again, I think it boils down to the quality of life. If somebody's eating an edible and or, uh, uh, you know, whatever format that it comes in, mm. at the town common, it's going to be very difficult for somebody to interpret what that is. And if that person's not creating a disturbance, is enjoying the show, then. I don't believe that there's going to be much of an issue. However, if if it's boisterous, if it's loud, some of that stuff is still there. The officer takes it and field tests it and comes back positive. Well, then a citation would be issued. But couldn't that activity be enforced under the public, uh, disturbance of the peace? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, but this would be another layer to that. Okay. So if you were to cite someone who was out of town because I would admit you know we get a lot of people who pass through what's the enforce I know I know like for certain laws if you get a like a speeding ticket you don't pay it then you can't renew your license or renew your registration what would happen in this case if you cite someone under the local bylaw and they decided we're not going to bother paying how would you would you track them down would there be some mechanism to to I don't know. Well, if they're, if they're out of state, there are a couple of mechanisms that we could use. While we can't mark their license like we can a Massachusetts license, we can certainly take them to small claims court for not paying the fine. And now they've got a small claims charge against them, which could result in an open case, in which the, you know, the court could issue an order for them to appear. And failure to follow the court's orders would result in a warrant or eventually, probably non extraditable, but it would still be in the system. It would still be something that they would have to deal with if they ever came back to Massachusetts. And ultimately an execution where you could put a lien on something that they own. Correct, <laughs> right. I mean, there, there, are, there are options, and we've done that because when we first started dealing with the civil penalties of the marijuana violations, there was no mechanism within the original laws when somebody was cited to make them pay, even if they were in the state. There was no, there was no, um, this, the, um, the 21D does give us the authority to mark their license in Massachusetts, but the original violations didn't allow for somebody's license to be, so they could get the $100 ticket and crumple it and throw it away, there'd be nothing you could do. So um, there was a few creative prosecutor police officers that realized that and worked with the court personnel 
that realize that, hey, you know what, we could just, uh, if you see in our budget, we have the marijuana, um, the marijuana fees, or there's a section of marijuana monies that we put aside and a line item in our budget, and that is just for those citations. So that if somebody does not pay, then we go take them to, to the small claims process at district court. Just, I just want to go back again, and we keep talking about the town common and somebody potentially smoking a joint next to somebody, which could be unpleasant for the people around them. Mm -hmm. um, like in the, in the state law, there is a restriction. You can't smoke in any place where tobacco is prohibited. So right. I think the question is where do we prohibit tobacco, obviously in the schools and, you know, so whether the town The public does. buildings and, right. and such. Right. But have we, you know, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the answer. I don't, I don't if know about we designated government. all public properties smoke free. And I know that there are certain areas, and, and again, I am, I am poorly versed mm. on, the, on the tobacco laws, so please excuse me on that. Private buildings are smoke free too under state regulation. Right. Okay, and I'm sure that there's, there are regulations that I'm not aware of um, that the Board of Health may be better versed on that could give me a map. Yeah. To to. to we would uh, probably have to check with them if they banned it on the town common. I don't know. It may be in it may be in any public place. You know, I just again I'd have to yeah, research I, I that. I'm know. sorry, I don't have the answer. For I know. That. I know. School grounds is it's definitely one, but that's actually state right, law. Right. There's a specific state law for that. Right. Law on that. Yeah, chapter and section for just for school. Right. Um, for school tobacco grounds. products on school. It's and all. It's not just smoking, signs. but it's tobacco products right. as a whole, and that includes chewing right, tobacco and, and such. Right. Yeah, that would be worth checking on the board of health. It'd be interesting to know if it applies to e-cigarettes as well. Yes. Perhaps. They might not if they haven't updated them. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps it's time to uh, look at those and have a more general, a broad application that would make that's cover. A, that's actually up to the Board of Health. It's I probably saw good. vaping in here somewhere. Yeah, well, it's in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably oh, there in it here. is, vaporized. <coughs> I don't know about the Board of Health. Yeah, it's Other questions? Madam Chair? Yes. Chief, I'm sorry. I know you've gone over this part of the question several times, but let me just try my way. Um, you mentioned that someone raised the possibility of an additional um, civil, civil penalty under this bylaw. Who, who were the people that um, generated that initiative? Was it individual voters or was there? If the, the I believe it was, I believe that when the law passed and the part of the law, the way the law was written, it developed the Cannabis Control Commission and set people on different paths of developing policy for the regulation. I think that it, w within that venture, they, there was the, the sections that allowed for and maintained for the local control aspect of it. And I, if you would give me a minute, I can tell you the chapter and section that authorized us to do this. And no, that's okay. Um, I can, I can find that. But I believe that that's where that originated from. Is not to, is so that the, the the cities and towns and the Commonwealth felt, would not feel like they didn't have an option of speaking and, and restricting their communities even more so. On the on the on the public use of uh, the public consumption of marijuana in their communities. It's not like a particular um, just a day, say for um, people that are using it recreationally and legally, but they're causing a smell that is unpleasant. Is that what you know? You think the public outcry is? I, no, I think that I I just think that it was I think that it was something that was um, considered when they were developing the law and said, okay, how are we going to deal with people consuming it in the public and you know how do we respond to that? And they say, okay, well we're going to have a state law that says it, it it's illegal and here's what the what the fine is and keep it consistent with everything else. However, what if a community wants to do wants to do their own bylaw? And, and make even stricter regulations, and they set the guidelines of how strict it can be and what we can do, and what's the maximum fine you can have, and what are the places that you can restrict, and they spelled that out for us cities and towns to, to follow, and I utilized what guidelines they had 
a model policy that's already been approved by the Attorney General's office and went through our town council and had them develop what you have before you. And, and you said that most towns and municipalities have a, such a bylaw. I don't have any any data at all on how many communities have a social consumption oh, bylaw. I'm sorry, I'm I only sorry. know two. And the one that was approved and the other one that followed suit afterwards. So I hadn't done that type of research on this to see how many I'm communities. Misunderstood. I think you said it the other way. When it comes to um, um, alcohol consumption. That oh, uh, yeah. That I said most. We're one of very few communities that don't have an, an open container law. Most all the communities have open container laws. I don't have a, the, the exact number, but I, there's not many that I can find that don't have one. Hmm. That's the last question that is in my mind. I, I don't understand why the sort of different paths to enforcement. I've, I've worked here since 1985 as a police officer. I've asked that question about a few times, and um, it's just the way it is. I, I, you know, I, and, then, and so will it be for this as well. It's all up to what the, you know, what the, the boards and committees decide and what the voters decide. I, you know, I was asked to bring this. this uh, I, I, I get that. As, I think the same way the chief did. That alcohol has been around for a lot longer than marijuana. It's gone through evolutions of enforcement and, and <coughs> social expectations one way or another. Um, and it doesn't appear to be an issue that we need a local bylaw to deal with. with um, <coughs> or, or, or restrict public consumption on, on the common events or whatever. If, if you know, if it was just a whole bunch of drunks every night running around the common drinking, then you know, the attitude in town may change. We, we may need to adopt that, but it just doesn't seem to be a big problem <coughs> that requires a local bylaw to enforce. If, if, if you have individuals and one-offs here and there, you have mechanisms to to deal with that through existing laws. With this being new, people are looking for the enforcement part. I think it was all part of the adopting this. We <coughs> allow people to have the opportunity to, to legally consume marijuana, but we want to enforce where it can and cannot be used. And the so. fact that we do have retail marijuana sales that are going to be occurring in Sturbridge in, near, in the very near future. Yep. And, and this was, again, a response to to that. Yeah. In, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know which group and which organization and, and how, how, it, how it came about. Again, uh, this was a task that I was set on by the previous uh, administration, and it was a goal that was set for me, and this is what I have before you tonight. Kevin, you have it? Yeah, I have an, an, another enforcement question, just curious here. So persons sitting at down at the town common, vaping their THC oil, drinking their green wine, and, and eating Green wine is marijuana infused wine. Okay. So drinking green wine and then also eating a very obvious, you know, marijuana brownie. Is that a nine hundred dollar fine or is that just one three hundred dollar fine? I would believe and I would hope that it's one instance of consumption. Because if that were the case, and utilizing your example, um, an officer could sit and watch somebody take five puffs and charge them fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, <laughs> but that, that, that's allowed here then. No, if, I, I, under it's that, a, a violation yeah. is a violation, okay. and I and I and I and I don't foresee it turning into something like, well, you've got one of these, two of those, three of these, four of those. It's it's one incident of public consumption. You're putting it, in, you're consuming it. And that's it. That's one instance. They, it, it doesn't matter how many times. Now, if the officer gets called away and then gets called back to the same people and they're doing the same thing again, well, then I can see them getting a second ticket. Okay. I can't see them getting three tickets for one incident. Huh? One instance. Think, well, the courts might eventually decide that. Right. So. Well, I was right. just curious. And, I mean, and, this, and again, I, 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 I firmly believe that this is going to evolve, and, and much to much to your opinion as well. You know, there may be people that sit here 20 years from now, and there may be some complete different changes with respect to this. Right, but I, I think some of the uh, nuances in the law will be court decided, not us or not in by law, though. Hmm? Not by law. But but something like this There's would no be sort of the department's practice in a way. I mean, I could see where one. But they did it under the state law. In the state law, yes, but not in the bylaw. Yeah. But and our practices change 
okay. with as the, the as law the laws law. change uh, and the procedures change, and, you know, yeah. we you know we, we we have to gear our business off of how we're expected yeah. to perform through the courts. So not not to shut down this this discussion, but to move forward and see if we have agreement one way or the other. How about I make a motion? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Okay. I still actually have questions. All right. oh, okay. I, I didn't Sorry, yeah. I've been yeah. patiently waiting. Um, I have a slightly different set of questions. Um, I actually find it very restrictive in in 8.7 8.72, um, and I guess I need some clarification on that. So, in the in the law, you know that you had sent to us, it says. And I don't see this in this bylaw, and I'm wondering why. It says, um, this blah, 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 shall not apply to a person who consumes marijuana or products in a designated area of a marijuana establishment located in a city or town that has voted to allow consumption on the premises we are sold and shall not be construed to limit the medical use of marijuana. So then I read, so I'm looking for that because I'm trying to see the differences in the state law and this restrictive local law. Mm -hmm. And I see in here, you know, you've, you, the, the article pretty much leaves not much unturned for prohibiting. I mean, with the exception of being very specific to the library parking lot, because you've got parking lots, you've got public stairways, you've got cemeteries, you've got everything imaginable in here that is not in the state law, you know, very specific. And then there's this thing that says, um, or any place to which members of the public have access as invitees or licensees, so I'd like to know what that means, or in or upon any bus or blah, 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 blah. So it seems to me that that, you know, invitees or licensees, does that mean if I invite you to my house or if I invite you to um, an event that I'm having at the library parking lot or, and then licensees, does that mean a town business that has a license to perhaps sell marijuana that can't seem to get voted in to have their area allowed? For smoking, do you follow me? Uh, I'm about five questions in, so I don't know. I, I'm not following you. I lost you. So you know, can you go and just ask me one question at a time, so I can clarify? And you first started so, talking about so the a, 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 an establishment like a retail marijuana establishment, and you asked about publicly consuming it on site. Well, that's so, currently in my understanding that's prohibited by law um, already. But that's not what this says. So. In Sturbridge, we voted, that got voted down. So we can have the establishments, we can sell it, but there's not On -site the ability consumption. to have any public consumption in Sturbridge. That so that's is, already in the bylaws? That's already in On the bylaws. Okay, so that yeah, answers so that question. We have to vote question. otherwise. Yeah. We are allowed to vote otherwise by that statute, but we and I think did the vote otherwise. the second part of what you were asking, in the language that you have before you is language that's adopted and taken from the current uh, motor vehicle laws with respect to operating under the influence, et cetera, and is my interpretation of what it's public. At the well, take the Walmart complex; that's private property. It's not public property. Mm -hmm. However, invitees, meaning you and I can walk up there and go and shop. Licensees, okay. meaning we can drive up there and shop. So that's what the language is. And uh, any help, help is my interpretation of what invitees and licensees are. Okay. I don't think it goes to specifically who you invite over your house and it, you know, if the town issues certain licenses to certain people. I think that that is just state language for all these private properties. The hotel, at the host hotel is private property. McDonald's is private property. However, if I follow a car into there, that private property is open to the public as invitees, meaning they can walk in, and as licensees, meaning they can drive in. So I think that that's what that portion of the law was indicating. Okay. Okay. Actually, licensees so, would be more like if you had a McDonald's parking lot and um, somebody got a license from you to set up a, a booth to sell lemonade or something like that, they're a licensee. 
in the in the in the in the, the public way definition of, of of what a public way is 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 any place that has invitees or licensees allowed to travel upon that upon that private property and that was I was the interpretation that I was taught that a, okay. a licensee oh, was somebody who was li oh, duly okay. licensed by the state that they're from or Maybe the driver's it's because license it's specific so to, to, like a, to a, a some sort way. of a public right. way but or right, even a private I, way right so would it make sense to even have it in there then yeah. yeah, because then you, they would be able to enforce in the Walmart Plaza. They'd be able to private enforce properties that are open to the public. That are open right. to the public. So right. without it, you could go lot. park yeah. on the Walmart parking lot and smoke a joint. Because it's not because the Walmart right. parking lot's private property. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe so then question: so She can invite people over to her house, or anybody can invite people that's over private her house. Property. Private property. That that's just private doesn't property. affect that consumption. That's, no. Um, it's not if it's on if it's on private property it's on private property it's not out in the public so then with that private property you said the whole hotel mm -hmm. is private property if i have a private party at the host hotel then you'd be subject to it because it's the it's, the public would have access to the hotel to the, to the, they, they don't the have hotel, access to your private but driveway not my private party you, no, not yeah in room, no. not in my room <coughs> Do you follow what I'm saying? I do, but uh, if I but, rent a room, <laughs> one of the big ballrooms, right. and it's a private party at right. the host, and only if you're invited can you come in here, right. can they smoke pot? Well, they might have no smoking rule. Well, uh, then again, oh, if right, they because, don't have no, a restriction be, on tobacco, no, because they they can't they because it, the what, the type if, of establishment that right. it is, I they believe can't. that they're restricted. They're a smoke-free establishment by law, yeah. so, yeah, so it falls back on that tobacco. Free that tobacco aspect of this but if you were in the parking lot of the host hotel having a party that's your question what happens then <laughs> thank you but members of the public have access to that that's whether you're invited yeah. or not, not. If, it's if, it's if you rented a ballroom or one of the well, well you're, you're, the ideal one is. is you rented the tent behind the public house which is you you know essentially a private room yes. but people Be because here's what so if you so here's the thing right people at and correct me if I'm wrong, because I might not know this specifically chapter and verse, but you can't smoke in restaurants. Mm -hmm. But if you have a private party and close down the restaurant, you can absolutely allow smoking. Why can't you allow no, pot you can't smoking? Yes, you, you can. Okay. Um, yes, I, you can. I disagree with you. I think that the Board of Health would disagree with you if they knew that you were having if you were smoking in a licensed establishment because if you're having a private party and you have to comply to all the standards that are required of the licensing that you get to sell the alcohol etc whatever else you get to do then I'm sure that that smoking aspect of it. but I think we're going no, far no. out of the scope of this bylaw and I really do believe that a lot of the questions that you may have should be directed to town council and not to me okay because I am then you know, I just I am have a couple a of extra component ones. of the law I'm not the interpreter of the law, and I'm not the writer of the law. So with, <laughs> with that respect to that, I think that the questions that you have regarding the what ifs here need to be directed to town council, not to the police chief. OK, I, I have a question that is not a what if. If the state of Massachusetts had voted to legalize recreational marijuana, why is it that we're putting fines on something that technically they're legal to do again it's a philosophical question that needs to be directed towards those who created the law and i think i would answer that it's not like it's legal anywhere anytime you want it's legal within certain parameters areas and what we're seeing is outside those areas it's not legal in massachusetts and this is the this is the enforcement regular, action these, these for those areas that massachusetts regulatory, doesn't want to regulatory restrictions on a legal on something that's legalized okay. no different than anything else that we then do. with all these restrictions but I would ask you to take a step back and look at this community and go through your building department and look at all your building restrictions go to your Board of Health look at all your your serving restrictions your choking restrictions your allergy restrictions take a step back and and go to every department that this town represents and look at the permitting aspect of it and look at the restrictions that the Department of Public Health, the Department of Mental Health, and all these state entities have put upon this community and communities like us and take a step back and see how each and every component of everything in day, every, everyday life is restricted and regulated and 
in, and the same questions can be asked about every one of those that we've accepted and that we allow and that we live with every day. So uh, this is just another component of it. Uh, you know, and I think that that's a bigger question for all those, uh, for all those laws and rules and regulations that we have that we deal with every day in this community. Okay. I can just like to say that it enabled possession of the law, a uh, possession of the marijuana legally, but not this. This deals with the public consumption. It's a different set of rules. It is. I mean, and it. Well, I guess you could rightly compared to you can't smoke in restaurants anymore. We haven't been able to for uh, whatever, 20 years or whatever. There I mean, are communities in Massachusetts where you can't smoke except in your house or in your vehicle. You can't smoke on a sidewalk right. or in a public park. Right. You can get cited for that. Cambridge is an example. Yeah, I know yeah, some that's of them true. Sm yeah, yeah. Smoking a cigarette on the sidewalk yeah. and police I mean, officers I, I, told them to put it out. It is, you know, different towns have different regulations for different the use of things that <clears> are otherwise legal to possess like cigarettes are legal for over 21 but you can't smoke in a restaurant you can't smoke in some towns on in public so public. does anybody else i think we've sort of exhausted all the questions everybody mike i think it was back to you sure so making a motion. how about i make a motion that the finance committee recommended town meeting approve what is now Article 41, as written, and by as written, I mean with the edits that um, we, we were informed of and will be reflected in the actual warrant article. Is there a second? Will we have that to confirm that these changes will be there? That, you know, the- Yeah, Barbara's gonna get it to us. <laughs> I'll second. Tomorrow or Monday, I forget. She got it pretty late in the day, I think, by the time she got to me. Okay. And, and so just to confirm the changes right there in the second sentence, yes. public consumption of marijuana, strike the word or, add and, and then marijuana products. Yes. And then at the end of 8.71, removing the semicolon, placing a period, and all the rest of the words are stricken. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Ooh. Abstaining. What did you vote? Four, four, and one? Yeah, so that's so defeated. That it's defeated. Mm -hmm. I'm not. What's that? In favor or against? Oh, against. against. And, and um, Jim's Jim, <laughs> I didn't really forget your name. It worked out perfectly, didn't it? Yes, it <clears> did. <throat> Like it was I apologize for not being as responsive as you've been very have responsive. <laughs> we have dragged you in I'm here. I'm sorry four that times. I didn't have all the answers to your questions. No. And, um, well, again, I'm not sure is, anybody would have to be honest, with. Chief. This is something we're all going to grow with together. We're all going to learn from together, and it's just it's just part of the process. I don't, I don't you know, one side or the other. I don't think the vote reflects the answers no, one way or the other. And I just, don't. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I do, and I just think that you know, it's it's a reflection of the times now, and. And we have to just wait and see what's going to happen and, and do the best we can do for our community now. So thank you. So thank you. Thanks again. And thank you so, for coming uh, in no again. Unlike, We're not calling you back. Unlike members of the public would petition articles, you're aware that if you want this to move forward, you need a substitute motion at, at town meeting. I will, uh, I will discuss it with whoever I need to discuss it with and move <laughs> forward and see what the appetite is and, and go from there. So All right, thank thanks you. Thanks for your time. Thank thanks you for again for coming in, Chief. Okay, Heather, I didn't think we'd be quite this long. Sorry. <laughs> thank you for coming in as well. It doesn't really matter. Especially since you're pinch hitting here. So you have several articles, and we do have a, a few changes there. Now, I don't even know if you know of the changes, Heather, but we'll, um, when we get to them, we'll get to them. Okay. So the first one is Article 2, which is the report, which was sent to you, I think yesterday I sent yeah. it out to you. Are any of the numbers changing? Because essentially it's just a recap of the <coughs> war no, articles. No, the numbers shouldn't be changing. Oh, no, no, nothing was changing. Except there was a typo in here that I found, so that will change. It says Grand Truck instead of Grand Truck, but it's, it's been changed already on the first ballot. Then statement. I would make a motion to accept Article 2 as written. Is there a second? Which article are we talking? Article two, the Community Preservation Committee report. 
That's a state mandate, mandated. I'll oh, second. Mandated report every year. Thank you, Chair. Discussion. All in favor? Okay, nine zero. Okay, the next the one. I'm sorry. Say the first or the second. Article three, well, Community well, Preservation well, Committee. Well, I don't know who the date. Today's the second. Oh, today's the hey, second. second. <laughs> Uh, is the administration funds, which is an annual request, so I would note that it has gone up this yeah. year from the usual 15 to 22. So I think that's probably question number one, to why did it go up? We have, uh, now we have a clerk. Oh, that I did now, yes. So that we're, that's an additional fund, uh, funding that we needed for that. And also, um, this year we're doing um, some title searches on um, potential property which um, has always been in the administrative fund that we've identified that as a need and also um, in case we need surveys on some of the property because we're doing some other projects that that may be applicable for. Then I guess the question is, do you have enough then? <laughs> uh, what get, that? Is there enough? Those can be pricey, the title searches and right. surveys. Well, we also have always had attorney's fees in there under the administration oh, okay. fund, as you know, in case we have to get some advice, which we've had to have just about every year now if we take on any anything that we're not quite clear on but those are the the main cost was our our clerk that we added was I would say was a major change in that uh, amount so the title searches that you're doing do you already have them categorized for what that's the potential the no it's potentially in case we need to do a title search oh so you don't have anything we don't have right now no. but that was already there when you had fifteen thousand dollars a year that potential Right, and I said that the addition this year was our clerk, our clerical support. So the seven thousand dollar increase is no, solely due to the clerk. But not just that. I mean, things cost more than they did five years ago too. You know, when you do, if you're doing anticipating doing a search or you're doing something like that, or attorneys' fees, as we all know, those things have gone up over the years. So I think we changed. I, if I remember correctly, and on, you know, I'm kind of second string here, so <laughs> my memory hopefully is good. Um, I think we increased it. Was it 15,000 last year? I thought it was more than that. I thought we did 18 last year, but I could be wrong. But that's uh, what it's for. But now I can look. So uh, a procedure question: If if it doesn't get used up, what happens to the balance? Goes back. Goes back into the back general funds. Yeah, it doesn't it's get 15, used. It was 15,000 last year. And we haven't used it. Oh, I don't think we've ever used all of it, so it's gone back in the general fund. And your clerk is just to record. Uh, minutes of your meetings, uh, they're not there during the day with sure. office hours exactly. or anything else. Okay. It's Joanne. Yes. Oh, it's Joanne? It's this oh. young lady right here. Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> so we can never meet Did you give her same. enough? <laughs> <laughs> She's doing a good job here. <laughs> okay, is there a uh, motion to approve Article 3? I'll make a motion to approve Article 3 as written at the town meeting. Second. Kevin, you're a little slower. I'm I'm still iffy about it. Okay. All right. We have Jared a, was a little slow. He, he got we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? So I believe that's eight one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Article four is community preservation debt service. This is again something that we vote every year for the, uh, let's see, OSP land, Heinz Farm, Town Hall Center office renovation project, and the um, recreation court project. And I believe last year's book has the duration of those and the totals, so any questions on that? This is I'll make previously a motion to approved debt, written. obviously. Second. Uh, any any discussion? All in favor? Nine zero. Thank you. All right. Uh, Article five has a change, so I'm going to read it. This is on the gravestone restoration. Uh, so this is, this is our ongoing project. Right. I think we've but there's some there's some wording changes. I don't no. know why. But oh, there are. Yes. No, there's uh, probably no change to the amount, and uh, the group that we have has done a, a terrific job there. So let, let me just read it. So it, after, it's a, see if the town will vote to appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund Historic Funds Balance 
the sum of $9,500 for restoration and repair of 15 to 20 historic, uh, is added, gravestones. Did you, you say the word for? For restoration and repair? I didn't hear that. Yeah, that's in yeah. there. Okay. I didn't change it. The, historic gravestones. The addition there is after the 20 is historic yeah. gravestones. Then in the towns, North Cemetery and Old Burial Ground, or take any, re any action relative there too. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that's how it was worded before, but that's how no. it was. It's not. Can you repeat that last part again? Sure. Oh, so after the gravestones, it's in the town's North Cemetery and Old Burial Ground. It's an and, not an or. It's yes. an and, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you didn't know about that little change. I, I didn't. I, you know, I'm looking over. Today. I'm looking over our notes from um, our meeting where we approved that, and I it doesn't have historic in there. But um, that was uh, from town council. Yeah, it's uh, so direct, the amount is the same as last year. Ninety-five. Right. They are historic. I mean, all these that have been restored are. Mm -hmm. I guess when you look at something that's I don't know what the cutoff for historic is, but it's certainly probably many of these are close to 100 years or more. And Bob Breer has um, done a nice job in bringing this to us each year. And, and they actually can only do so much work. I mean, the, the weather and so on. So it's a little restrictive. But this is, um, if there's no change to it. I don't know why the word historic got in there. But if, if it makes a difference, I don't know that there are any markers that are in there that not, are, are really not historic. So right. I'll make a motion a change. to accept the article as worded by the town council. Okay. Second. Okay. So th this is ongoing. You have it every year. Uh, it, it's they can only do so many um, markers a year, and yep. so that's been every year. So it's it's a nice project, but um, it just keeps coming and coming, and it seems like it's just going to go on indefinitely. So is there? Do you guys have like an inventory of how many uh, which have been uh, done and how many might be left to be done um, is, is there an end to this project in the next five or 50 years or is it just well yeah, we're gonna it's keep kind of on sad going because i understand that um in taking a tree down at one of at i'm not sure which ground but grave markers were broken and they're oh. going back to the tree service that did the tree work to take those down but so there are things that do happen over the years yeah. Um, that's the problem. A lot of roots have come up, and a lot of these uh, markers fall over then because of the tree roots. So I would say that it slows down, but uh, it's always one of those things that there's something to do. Something breaks, something cracks in two, and they go through and restore it so that it doesn't get any further damage. But um, we've asked, and Bob Briere, as I indicated, has. Um, they have a survey of all the markers that need the group that does this. A husband and wife that do it to have a service and they do have surveyed it and given us and i don't have the numbers off the top of my head but they have surveyed how many they've done and how many they anticipate that still need to be done and it's still quite extensive because they really don't do that many each year um, it's very depending on the damage that's been done to the marker it can be very expensive to restore so some are simple and some are not so it's a case-by-case -case basis if that's a list that the, the committee has and some, uh, if you guys could just forward it on now, okay. that would be helpful. I'll ask Mr. Briere to do that for you. Okay. Has he been to the, to, has he come forward to you folks? No. no. Not this year. I, I believe he's come other years uh, and past years on the, the gray okay. stones, though. I'll ask him to give you an update. Well, he could even just send it. I mean, he doesn't need to come. We're almost okay. done here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. we don't want to prolong it too. He doesn't need to come and present no, it to I mean, us. We I know, just I meant need the to list. send it. Yes. Oh, no, no, I just send no, 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 that's what I meant. Not yes, to have yes. him come, but to oh, bring the list. No, but bring the list to you because yes. I know he has one. Okay, okay good. That would be great. Thanks. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's nine to zero. All right. Article six. The, there's no changes to this one. This is the comprehensive housing study for $22,500. Oh, this is the one for the housing study. Right. Yes. There's no changes, I mean, to it that Barbara gave me today. Okay. So it's as is here. I don't have a copy of the, the, the article, so 
Oh. No, I, I wasn't given one. So. It just says for the purpose of funding a comprehensive okay. housing study. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. For 22.5. I'll make a motion to approve the article as written. Thanks. Is there a second? Second. I do have a question, though, before we go off. Okay, go ahead. Um, you know, later on, Heather, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask because it came up. We, 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 in Article 38, we're asking the town to establish the municipal affordable housing fund. Do you know if the funds in the CPA designated for housing can be used to seed that trust fund we're establishing? Um, I don't know about that, about the trust fund. I know that we can, <coughs> we can uh, approve funds for affordable housing. And, um, but I'm not sure about the trust fund. I don't know. And if you would, do you know more about the trust fund? I have. You don't know either, so. No, okay. yeah, we, that question came up when we were discussing it, but we figured, I figured since you're here and you're representing the well, source I, of the Well, I don't, um, and I'm, this is something that was at the, at our last meeting was not available. All the total information was not available at the time. And we put in a marker for it, a, a holder uh, okay. for that, and then, um, they got the information together and provided it so that it was approved. Um, but I don't know about that trust fund. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry to say I don't. And there, this, this a is a study, um, I'm assuming a study to, to find out, is it where the possibility of putting affordable housing or? Well, there is an affordable housing project that's um, being considered. Um, I understand there have been some a few minor, some changes to it to help uh, move it along. There's also Habitat for Humanity has come to the town and they want to do another project too. So we have two two things that are going on. So what this, is this study? This is a study for the affordable housing. It's a, for a parcel in town on Route 131. An additional parcel? No, it's it's a one that they want to. Um, put ho affordable housing units. Okay. It won't be completely affordable housing, but they will designate a certain percentage of units that will be affordable. So, so what are we studying? Um, let me take a look. Um, the summary might be helpful. Yeah, it does say the plan will describe <laughs> oh, the type of housing and identify parcels in town available for construction of new affordable housing. Right. And we had um, a couple of parcels that were town owned that we wanted to, that are, were not buildable in, in some respect, you know, um, that we were looking at to see for the habitat project. But this one, I believe this one is for, um, and I, again, I, I'm sorry that I don't know more about it. Let me take a quick look and see if I- It looks uh, like you have um, to have it on file yeah. in order yeah. to take advantage of it. I think it was- yeah. I'm, I'm all set. The, I, I did not Sweet read the, uh, the, the summary Excuse description, which is yeah. Yeah, helpful to me. So I'm all set. Thank you. It does say, by the way, it is required to have it up to yeah. date. We did have, the CMRPC has done this. But not since, I think, 07. 07. So I think it's supposed to be every five years. years. So is, that's what this says, anyway. And. Um, so we're behind. So they're working to update the plan so that we can get qualify for the for the funding. And um, <clears throat> yeah. of course, we're still even with this project that's coming, we will still be below our 10% goal of affordable <coughs> housing in town. Sadly, so. Is that being addressed more aggressively? Well, you know, the every time we, any time new houses are built you know, the percentage goes down. And um, we're trying to identify additional parcels, as I said, with the Habitat project, and there's two other parcels that were being considered so that we could do that, but it's also getting financial backing for somebody that will build them and so on. But it's, uh, you know, as you build more houses, and if we ever do any more with Dowdy Road and those four parcels up there, and there's four on, uh, on Route 15 that are going up now, and so you just end up that no matter what you have, you're, we're always kept trying to catch that 10% yeah. goal. We covered this in one of the essays in the book two years ago, and I think right. Larry's the one who pointed out that even though the money's available, it's not up to the you folks to come up with right. the ideas, it's up to people to approach you right. to come up with ideas. Right, for that's what happens. So, and, I, and I think so at some point, approaches the CPC, you know, yeah. we, I kind of look back on it, and perhaps if we, when we approved, um, developments 
we, if we had had a bylaw that said you have to set aside certain a certain percentage, ten percent, you know, if every time we had a development, mm -hmm. you had to set aside ten percent of the houses for that were affordable, then we probably wouldn't be in this situation either. But That's as true. we have more parcels that become, you know, and, and more parcels and more houses that are built, then it mm -hmm. gets a little tougher. And the, you know, our 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 housing folks are <coughs> really working diligently on this. They've done a great job on it. So and trying to find and uh, identify parcels that are available and that would make it feasible to build houses on. I was told, but I haven't verified separately, that uh, the CPC funds can go to that trust fund, but I haven't verified that. That separately. can go what? Can go into, into the, the, the trust, trust fund. fund. Mm -hmm. But I don't, mm -hmm. I haven't verified that separately. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told by someone on the housing partnership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm an interesting way to seed it that's all yeah mm -hmm. so any other questions on that not all in favor opposed I'm abstaining because my husband's on that committee oh, 801 okay. 801 okay uh, article 7 again there's a change here after the semicolon, it says, uh, after the word proposal, we're supposed to include for recreational purposes, and then where, the semicolon. Wait, where are See we? This, uh, on Article yeah. 7, where the semicolon is after oh, the okay. proposal, we're putting for recreational purposes. Do we want to differentiate between active or passive, since that's well, been I asked a, a that. long debate? I asked that of, of um, Barbara, and she did not know. Yeah, that does become, does become an issue. It does, yeah, yeah and we're I not being clear him. here. Did Tom, did Tom Chamberlain come before the committee, your finance committee? Not on this. He's been here on Yeah, three. he's been here. I asked him to come tonight, and he said he'd, had spent, he'd been here quite a few times, and he thought he'd covered everything. So did that come up at the no. time? No. Oh, it didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because technically it is active recreation. Mm -hmm. It is. I would think that that is active, yes. I think it's important to know whether we need to put that in or not because yeah. I did ask Barbara that. It makes a huge difference. That was the biggest problem down there. I know, yeah. on what, the Shepherd property? Yeah. 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 yeah, especially if it's not in there and there's some default and all of a sudden people can't use the trails anymore, that would be horrible. Right. Do you know, okay. Jeff? You, well, first of all, whether it's active or passive, I would think that you would be active. The space you walk on, so I would consider it be appropriate either way. Yeah, but the creation is recommending the trailers. Well, I don't know. We've had trouble. We with had this. trouble with whether it was considered because one of the parcels when we bought it with CPC funds, year, year, we right at the beginning, right. we, it, I believe we said it was for passive recreation, right. and then. We ran into trouble right. later when we couldn't put ball fields on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if walking is considered passive, actually. I think I it is. It is. It is. Yes. Walking. Open space you can walk on. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's passive. What else do you do on a trail? Active, you right, it's passive or active. So, right. but if we. Active traditionally in the, in the park vocabulary, active is more organized, where you build something. Well, you are building trails. I would feel and better if parking you had, because what if somebody wanted to play frisbee thing that they play golf frisbee on the trails? Are we going to have a problem? It, you know, I think I don't it, think too many people are going to do that, Karen, because there's no space. You need open space to have that. frisbee okay. golf. I just know we've had trouble fresh, with this. But, <laughs> I, know, I did ask Barbara that. That was my but, first but question. But there again, on, but. you know, you're allowed to cross country ski on on right. trails. So yeah, that's a better this example. Passive slash mm -hmm. active. It seems very active to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but. Not, it's not restrictive, is what I mean. It, you can do it, so you'd be able to do it here as well. Are we meeting again? Yes, space. I think we're going to have to meet one more time. True, true. Yeah. Uh, do you think this is something if we wanted to amend the article to add the word "active" in front of for active recreational purposes? Well, that would be in scope for the. Um, Mike, when I can't think of what his role is, moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Kevin, you, you're way too young to be. Uh, no. <laughs> it just 
blank there, but you know, I'm thinking Mike. But. I think personally, my personal feeling is a lot of people would think of active recreation would be organized. Yeah, a soccer field. That's soccer how I field. think of it. That's I think active uh, to me is. And that's having, what having that's where the controversy is. be golf tournament or something, something when you're not <coughs> hosting. And but does, one, doesn't this land include all that that land at the corner of 148 and no. 20? No. no. It's not no. on that other side. It starts by. It no. starts by the. Um, you're talking about the mill. One. Yeah. Yeah. Further down. Right. It's further down. Right. It's by, yeah. the, further it's by down. the bridge. It's by the river. Right. The it's river right land. The, this is the for the river lands. On Holland Road. On Holland Road. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it goes all the way along that side of the river, all the way to past Dalian Hill, doesn't yeah, it? It all connects that way. It's on the it's on the other side. Uh, yeah, it's on the correct. other side. Yeah, and it goes to Stallion Hill. Mm -hmm. And there's no flat land over there at all. Mm -hmm. It's flat, but it's not open. You're talking mm -hmm. hills yeah. and trees and oh. <laughs> a small. I think path. that um, <laughs> that's where the controversy it's came in before weird. because it. Didn't it did say Throw passive, hit, and we? I think feet. everybody's intention was is that it was active space, right? And, and you know, so when you really interpreted it as passive, then it was not available for fields, as as I remember it. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well. It, no, that's exactly it, it what was, it was. But yeah. I, I'm so just, I think by. Yeah. That's why I'm wondering if do we include it and allow the well, option? I don't see where there's any flat area that you could have a. That you could make a field unless you carve out a section of the hill. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Here's some. Wait a minute. Here's something. Hold on. Or fill up the lower end. Well, you can keep talking while I keep looking. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like there was ever any intention, or even the possibility of fields. Mm -hmm. Well, no, perfect. no. The one, so it doesn't seem like there's going to be any conflict. want to make but. sure that active, that passive doesn't mean something that we <clears> don't <throat> really mean here. So if is, the intent is, from, from well, the get-go was this is always going to be trails, then I Is there a distinction problem. here? Uh, let me uh, ask the, uh, sort of a hypothetical, I suppose. Um, in unorganized fashion, 20 people who happen to ride uh, trail bikes uh, show up randomly and uh, they fall more or less into a ragged line and off they go on the one hand. On the other hand, the same 20 people make themselves into a club and they have shirts and hats and stuff and they agree we'll all show up at 10 o'clock and we'll go and do the same thing only as a group. Is well, there a difference when it comes well, are, to active well, there are or walking, passive? Well, there are walking groups that do that, obviously, well, on the trails, okay. too. I, I wonder if it, is it active or passive, the same 20 people, yeah. but yeah. organized and not organized? Mm -hmm. Maybe. And, and I think of a recent of, example of that was the Plimpton property, where 20 acres were put aside to develop ball fields and defined as area for active right. recreation, right. and the balance of the land was passive recreation exactly. for trails and hiking and dirt biking, perhaps, and on the trails, you, you can, could, you could I, snow ski. It was specifically outlined that way. You're exactly right. Nature photography has been taken to mean passive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's watching. no impact in a physical sense right. on the landscape. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting and looking at right. uh, you're say, not cutting down trees and planting grass. Sure. And mm -hmm. So, are you trying to put active because you know the article itself doesn't? specifically identify what it's going to be used for Correct. even though the comment box is very clear as to what it is they're going to be doing. The comment box is not <coughs> the, not by law though. W would you be more? That's ours. We can put yep. whatever we want in that. So would your issue be addressed instead of worrying about whether it's active or passive and, but um, instead of just saying for recreational purposes for and, li and lifting some <laughs> specific language out of there? Well, I think in actually the inclusion of recreational purposes what was, throws it off. Was, uh, was actually, though, on how you can expend CPA funds right. in, within the scope oh. of the law. Oh. Oh. So I'm not sure. Oh. Now, now I'm remembering the conversation. Okay. <laughs> that that it's changes. It's more the scope of All what right. you can spend it on needed the recreational bit. Yep. And that was the attorney's comment. He had a comment about the, it was more about the legal use of the money rather than the right. use of the property. 
Yeah. Because I mean, I look at the con even the construction of a parking lot in the in the construction of fence and storage sedge is active because you are modifying the landscape of the parcel in order to construct. Oh, but in the vernacular, that's not what active means. No, no, because getting access to the parcel is going to require something like that. And you can you can reserve a soccer field, a baseball field. You can't reserve a trail. Right. Yeah, I think by putting active in there, I think is. I, don't I think, think that, yes, yes, now that I'm going back, it was late in the day, and it's now even later. But the recreational bit was because how you can legally spend exactly. the money for trail improvement has to have a specific, that purpose. So, okay. so not that I'm a big fan of, of, of the University of Google, yeah. but it says here, active recreation refers to structured individual or team activity that requires the use of special facilities, courses, fields, or equipment. Passive refers to recreational activities that do not require prepared facilities like sports fields or pavilions. Okay. Good job, Mike. So I think we're saying, well, I'm also trying to look at that big recreation So case, would you? But it would seem to have But I think the key element here is recreation, not active or passive. It's recreation. No, it is just, yes. Yeah. Because well, we, we used CPC money to do the tennis courts. We can do That's it for recreation. We can do it's it for active, active also. Recreation. The money can be used for active recreation, exactly. As long as it's recreation, key word. Right. But I'm just trying to alleviate the very long discussions we have over what was meant by a very vague term called recreational purposes. So in this case, it almost seems like I could just say passive recreational purposes based on what everyone has said here so far. Well, I think, it's, I think it probably is best to just leave it as recreational because it's more the how the money can be spent. Yeah, no, I, I understand it. It's, 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 it's to, yeah, to make the funding mechanism legally adept you're know? trying to use one of those words to define what we're going to use it for i i don't think i get there by either one of those words i, I get there by you know words coming out of this c c comment box that are more specific as to well, parking I, lot and but fences right. and stuff again like the words don't don't have anything the comment box has nothing to do on what the actual legal wording of that's, this that's, is. that's what i'm saying is if you, if you want to make sure it goes to that purpose and we change the wording of the article to re add those particular uh, purposes into it versus just for recreational purposes for the construction of a parking lot and fence and blah 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 in in the article the town council seemed to think that you know this, this allows the expenses because oh, there's certain money. restrictions on how you spend money when it's in yeah. well the only part of this article that is a development part is the riverlands mm -hmm. you know because there's always been We've worked on for several years trying to put a trail through there on the riverlands and so on and there was some question about um, soil contamination which has been taken care of but the other part of this article does specifically say that it's for the uh, it's for um, and general trail improvements so it's for an existing trail it's not something that's going to be developed except for the Riverlands section and um, I think that that feasibility part that they're going to work on this I think for the Riverlands is anticipating that they're going to you know what kind of construction work they're going to have to do to have access to the riverlands which won't include baseball fields or anything else mm -hmm. i don't think there's any room there i well, think we all agree there. as you said you know when you look at it it's mm -hmm. pretty restricted so i think we should probably leave it as for recreational purposes I agree. if you look at it in the context of what it's asking mm -hmm. i think that's appropriate you so, might be further changing the scope of the article by restricting it to one or the other. Yes, yeah. I, that's why I was going to ask. But yeah, I think you could be, actually. I mean, I, I get the, the, the intent of adding the wording so we can actually fund them with CPC funds without any questions being right. raised by anyone. So. so you're going to leave in recreation purposes? Yes. Then? Okay. Heather, I, I noticed there was one descending vote on this. Are, is there something controversial about this? Um, I don't recall. Let's see. Well, it looks like somebody abstained. Uh, oh, they abstained. So there might have been a conflict. Trails. Yeah. So what I have on ours is that we had, um, it was five and five to zero. Was oh, our this has four zero one. So. Could be a mistake then. Placeholder. This was for the placeholder for the trails, and we did not, you know, when we did this, it was 
I have in our minutes, it was five zero. Hmm. Well the, well, the 401 is five one zero is zero. an Right, right, but 50 versus has, anything else is a much stronger yeah. statement. Yeah, I'm just wondering if somebody will. No, we had an issue of that. Hmm. We had 50 on it. So that's something that should be corrected before the final one goes out, right? Yes. Yes. Now we didn't have any any ob ob objection to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did we already moved this one. No. no. I'll make a motion that we approve Article 7 as written at the town meeting. With the addition of the four With the addition of four recreational okay. purposes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. I don't think there's any need for further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? That's 9 0. Okay. Okay. Article uh, 8. Again, a, a change. This is for the town cemetery signs. This is new. This is $1,000. So I'm just going to read it. After the $1,000, it's going to read for the construction and installation of two signs for the purpose of preserving historic gravestone, gravestones. And then the rest is as is. So we're crossing out purpose of and adding in for the after signs for the purpose of preserving historic gravestones. And this is to deter rubbings and that sort of thing, which may use chemicals, which could right. harm the gravestones. And it's also the signs going to indicate you can't lean or stand or stand on the markers, and um, it also is going to prohibit unleashed dogs. Is what the sign? It would be what? Unleashed dogs will not oh, be permitted oh. in the cemetery. Oh, yeah, also. that's actually a good. Oh, point. so it's not a sign saying old historic cemetery. No, no, it's <laughs> no. no. It says it's in here no, it's, to ask them to refrain but, from doing certain things. Yeah, because um, I don't, rubbing a lot of people do rubbings on gravestones, yeah, but it, do, it yeah. actually wears down the gravestone. So, because a lot of them are made from slate, so it's ruin it's ruining them, Is and um, so they can't stand, lean, or jump on the gravestones either, and they have to leash their dog if they bring it in. Is there an alternative to uh, a rubbing that would allow somebody to? to I think that's why they we're also restricting that they can't put any um, chemicals on it or anything like that either, or powder to pick up the. It's um, I can remember I was talking to Barbara Search about this and I said I could remember years ago, uh, I used to live in uh, Maryland that the National Cathedral you could go in and do mark uh, oh. rubbings and they they quit that they stopped it, and what they did was they came up with uh, replicas. They weren't the originals because they'd been damaged somewhat, so they ended up coming up replicas, and you could go in and, and do the mar uh, the rubbing on those, but they restricted that also. They used to take school field trips to yeah, that graveyard. Yeah, absolutely. And, rub the, and I think they did use to rub them. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I know that genealogy is becoming uh, it's very right. fashionable. I guess, you'll, that, I guess you have to take a picture now, and that's probably the best yeah, you can do, ask, I would, is, I would uh, guess. You mentioned the, uh, the the couple that does the restoration. I wonder if they have any uh, suggestions for for people that would like to yeah. some sort of keepsake. But did the board of selectmen vote on this one because they they have hold there. Did that change after their meeting this week? It really doesn't matter. Not yet. They're going to meet. Which, uh, we can talk about one yeah. Oh, okay. I know uh, Barbara Search is going to that meeting so to talk about this. I do have just one question. Are the signs going to conform with all the other? Signs as far as you know the wayfinding the, the symbols and all that stuff. Um, I have not seen a, a anything a, a copy of them, but I can I will make that suggestion. I'm sure Barbara will be glad to do that from the historic committee. Mm -hmm. Would make a lot of sense. Yeah, to do that it's so that they're not just cemetery. They should be uh, you know etched in stone in some fashion that, yeah. versus and printed on some modern right. day material. Then you can rub those. Put them on slate. But, <laughs> but we're yeah, trying 150 to. years from now, yeah. somebody will have to go back and. Yeah, I agree with you, Kevin, to make them uniform. Yeah. I don't think that would make a lot of sense. It and it's standard. It's a um, finding sign, though, Kevin, you know what I mean? No, standard. but that symbol the same is question, all. Though. The symbol, yeah. though. Yeah. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it should right. be yeah. consistent like we're doing everywhere else in town. So and the fonts are the same, same and the exactly. coloring and so on. That's a good suggestion. I'll send that on to Barbara. I'll make a motion that we recommend a town meeting to approve Article 8 as written. With the correction for with the corrections that I, I read. With the, with <laughs> the corrections from the town.
town council. So okay. I already corrected down here for related to and relative to. Oh, that one? This is the thing I sent them. Oh, right. Yeah, that's been corrected. Don't okay. me. <laughs> is there a second? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, second. Jared. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Jared and Karen. Jared and Karen. Okay. All right, any other discussion? All, all in favor? 9 0. Okay, um, Article 9 is the Grand Trunk Trail <laughs> Central Section Feasibility Design Study. That is a mouthful. Let's see, there was no changes on that one. Um, and that is. Could you talk about that for a second? <laughs> what is it? As I Where understand it, we've, we have been working for uh, quite a long time to make the connection, and there's been a um, section um, that, needs to be, that needed to be access, accessible to make the connection to, uh, for the Grand Trunk. It kind of stops and goes through property. Oh. And that's what I think that Tom was talking about was a feasibility study, what it was going to take to be able to get that done. Um, I know it's been talked about, but we've never done any funding so that they could actually move forward with it okay. um, and determine if they could have right away on the property or if they needed to purchase something. And I think that's what his feasibility study is for. So I do have a question, though, as the source of the funding. Why is one trail article <coughs> coming from undesignated fund balance, but this one's coming from open space rather than designated fund balance. I don't know. I don't have that answer. I really, I don't know. Unfortunately, um, I let me see if we had anything on here that would make me. Nope. Nope. In our last meeting, uh, I don't know. It's not really. Um, one part of it is is that it's not really a trail for. Uh, I mean, it's an existing national regional trail and i'm not sure if that's part of it because it's not our trail system that we're trying to link it. we're trying to link into an existing trail system i don't know why um maybe the funding maybe that's why the th the thinking is that way i'm not sure the feasibility study coming out under that versus that there's no improvements on a trail or there's no we're not establishing the trail. We're kind of trying to make the linkage to an existing trail that's gone, that goes through the state. And um, maybe that's why, I'm not sure. So if, let's say we do the feasibility study mm -hmm. and then we, we want to go ahead and do this linking up, would that require us then to also do it through open space funds? I don't, I don't think so, I think, I don't know. I'm not sure why it went to open space to begin with, so I can't say. I don't want to lead you down a path and tell you the wrong thing. But um, I would say that it might be simply because it's not our trail system that we're trying to link into, that it comes under another interpretation. I'm not sure. And the, and I, well, that's why I'd hope Tom would be here tonight, but that's something you'd have to ask Tom Chamberlain, unfortunately. I think he, he did mention this in his discussion. He, as he did act, mention, activities. I think, this. And including the OSV, which is on the next Right, project. that's the next yeah. one. They need that partial. But I don't see, but we didn't have the warrants at that point when he was here. He was talking right. about his budget, but he did talk about it a bit, but mm -hmm. it was sort of hard to connect the dots yeah. for ourselves because we didn't have the warrant articles right. yet. Because he did, yeah, he, because I know he talked about <coughs> the other one with having the, that student or whatever they're called, Student Conservation Corps, um, which is in Article 7, because you talked about that. Um, so, anyway. So is there a motion, or do you need more information, Kevin? No, I'm good. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve Article 9. If you Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, it's 9-0. I believe the last one for you is Article 10, for which there are some changes. Okay, so, and by the way, this is one of those places where it will be, we'll have to put in a two-thirds vote because it's land, and that's always a two-thirds vote. I can't hear you. That's a two-thirds vote. We're going to have to put that in. We usually put that in parentheses under the title. There's a, there's a few so of them that haven't been put in because it's land. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so this is going to read after the $5,000, it's for the purpose of purchasing an easement from Old Sturbridge Village to provide access to the Riverlands Trail. Right. And the rest of that is crossed out, that funding bit. And then it then goes right to, or take any action relative there too. Purchase, could you just say that one? Yes. I'll read the whole thing. To, to see if the town will vote to appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund, open space fund balance, the sum of $5,000, for the purpose of purchasing an easement from Old Sturridge Village to provide access to the Riverlands Trail or take any action relative thereto. Can I ask one, this is gonna sound crazy, in, in the original article, it's OSV, they actually spell out Old Sturridge Village know, because that's, that's where I think it should be. That's the way it was told to me, and so that's why, the way I wrote it down. Yeah, I would think it should be spelled out fully too so no one mistakes OSV for anything else. Yes. So that so out. Right. That's the way it was read to me by uh, by Barbara, so I did not abbreviate it. Don't, don't, I, you, you'd be I surprised. Right. I think you're right. So is it purchasing an easement from OSV I or don't for I OSV? Yeah. From. I think so. <laughs> they own the property. You just okay, want to make I sure. Can I just clarify where the placement, um, $5,000 for the purpose of purchasing from Old Sturbridge Village to provide access to, provide access to the Riverlands Trail. So easement costs for Grand Trail Trunk easement is all gone? Yeah, but the funding through easement is gone. I was looking at my notes. Kathy? And yes. Then, so it's Old Sturbridge Village to provide access to the Riverlands Trail. Yes. Thank you. Is the life of the easement forever? The purchase. Easements run with yes, the land? Yes, it runs with the land, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you say yes? They run yes. with the land, yeah. 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 Although I doubt Old Sturridge Village is ever going to sell, but if right. they did, the easement would, would run. Yes, it would run with the land, so it would go on forever. Yeah. Unless it was specifically ended by the town. Right? We, we would be the to town. That, we right? would have to. We would have to. We would, the town would. Yeah. Yeah. Because we would have the dominant, whatever it's called, right? <laughs> Bar exam question. I know, right? <laughs> We're the dominant, they're the servient. <laughs> so I'd make a motion to approve Article 10 as written from the town councils. Okay. Making sure the Old Sturbridge Village is fully spelled out. Well, that's the way I wrote it out. Yep. So. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? 9-0. I think that's it for you, right, Heather? I think so. Thank yes, you. well, thank you so much yeah. for coming. Sorry, I don't know about the open space versus whatever. But I'm sure details. Tom would love to come back and talk oh, to you again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. What, what, oh, what I'm thinking is more, story. you know, the next step, if we take it, does it need to come from the same funding source? Yeah, I agree with you. It's a, quest it's a good question yeah. down the road when we do something, yeah. start to make the improvements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. All right, have a good night. So is there anything else we're missing? I'm just looking. I thought there was one more. I feel like there was something now, but I'm The alum not. treatment. What happened with that one? The, the oh, yes, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, we haven't voted that yet. And actually, he emailed me today, and I said, I, I think you have to go back to Jeff. Or the Jeff attorney or. reviewed that one and, basic, and said that you need to put it on as it was written, but somewhere between now and then, get with the group and work with them to prepare a substitute that meets our criteria. But accomplishes basically the same thing, and to vet them on what truly does this mean. Okay. Then I'll make a motion that we take no action on Article 43. I thought it was 46. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's you know it's four, well, I had 43. It was 46 in the original one. It's 43 now. 43. You dropped three articles. I mean, they can come back and put in their substitute Oh, I think motion. I put. I must have added the wrong so, one here. At town meeting, someone will. Oh do yeah, that. you're right. This. You know what? I had them loose and I added the one from the old one. It's 43. It's it is 43. It's the alum to oh my goodness. Somewhere. Yes, you're right. Article 43. Okay. I'll second. 
So that no, sounds good, but the question is, who will meet with them right there? Because we had a discussion. You will. Okay. I've already uh, had contact with one of the representatives, and uh, he's going to be scheduling a meeting with uh, the group and I. Okay. Okay. Because we and had we'll that discussion. We'll work with the attorney Thursday to make sure it's in the proper there, format. I think it became clear from the finance committee didn't want to write the the substitute motion. No, we'll take care of that. It's no, I level. did. I did email him today because he had emailed Doug. Mr. Vizard had emailed me, and I said mm -hmm. it wouldn't be us writing; it would be to get together with mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and we'll work with the attorney and make sure it's. So, so Kevin, I, I understand your 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 motion, and, and I, if I, if I'm summarizing your your past position on this, it's because this is not in the right form, but it sounds like a motion in the right form, consistent with the intent that's in this article, is going to come to town meeting. So, mm -hmm. isn't it? I guess I guess you can say we we can act only on the one that's in front of us, not the one that will come. Correct. At some point, will we take a position as a finance committee one way or another as to what would be up to the chair? Well, we usually do meet on that night. So you could say, could you know, that, that night you could consider it that night. And we usually schedule it. But the no. substitute motion won't come till on the floor at that moment unless Well, we'll probably have it by then, though. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm with you. So we should have an opinion knowing that this is most likely going to, let's assume Jeff's going to, you know, help them out and give them, give them a motion that, that in the proper form that they're going to want to take forward and have a discussion. It would be nice for the Finance Committee to make a recommendation when it comes. But if we, we would certainly have that. It won't come a minute before town meeting. I'm sure you'll have it in advance and we can, we can discuss it at our meeting prior to that. And then if, mm -hmm. it, if it is presented, at least inform the, the voters as to what our recommendation on that substitute would be. That would, if the it's up to Kathy. If she puts it on the agenda for us to do that, then that, it's her completely her choice. Power. It is. Power. That's that's what the purpose of the chair is. <laughs> is it on the agenda or not? That's right. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second for no action on Article 43. Hey, Larry. So if the motion passes, when the book is printed, it will be no action. Right. Okay. Just wanted to yes. be explicit. Yes. Any other discussion? Are you going to put it on the agenda for that night? I would expect that I would. Okay. <laughs> All in favor, no action. Opposed? So it's 8 1. All right. Thank you. I think. Bruce, I assume you're doing that because you think we should support this in some fashion. Uh, I think we should reject it. Oh, that's what the no action does. We no action. So, Kevin's motion will reject the article as as it's currently written. Yeah, I understand that, but I think that it doesn't add up for me. Mm -hmm. You're rejecting supporting doing anything in in principle. Yeah, right. I understand what you meant. I would just tell Mr. Vizard he needs to be prepared to answer. Because I imagine the public is going to want to know why right. this much, who else is paying, all the same questions we have. Right. You know? I, I agree, because the distribution of the properties around that lake are not, from what we were told, are not accurate, because I went into the count on the three towns, right. uh, what's on those roads. And yeah, I half, don't the, think half the houses on that lake the, that are on have lakefront to... are in the other two towns. Not 60% us, 40% them. It's about 50-50. I think we need more accurate information. Cost sharing should be a little more proportionate if we're going to do it at all. I'm, I'm actually, you know, you know, honestly, I'm with Bruce. I, I'm, I'm against this completely all the way through. I'm, I'm but the proper really thing to do right now at this point, the way it's presented, is no action until we get something back. Mm -hmm. I agree. Did Brookfield say that they would pay something? They're going, to, they're going to ask Brookfield for twenty-five. They're going to ask East Brookfield for fifteen, and they're asking us for fifty-five thousand dollars. The so out of the 95, we, we're going to do 50 from the host community. Do and be the host community, yeah. And in that regard, then we, we would be the administrators. Yeah. And there's a oh. cost associated yeah. with that. Jeff? The gentleman I spoke to today did say that other towns had made a commitment. Oh, they did? They and did. I don't, I don't have the details, but it was a very brief conversation. Well, if you were the other towns and you were presented with our thing, you'd take it in our area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have most of the water, but Sturbridge is footing most of the bill. Passing along information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. It's like the school all over again. <laughs> yeah, don't take it out on the uh, 
the messenger here. <laughs> Remember, he's still the new guy. <laughs> oh, that was fine. Yeah. I don't disagree that cost should be proportionate, if at all. Mm -hmm. I think we are done with the town. I, do. I now we, now I do. Yes, I believe we are. The warrant. Any Special line item to... budget changes? Shh. No. <laughs> well, we want to make sure before we all leave. <laughs> if we don't act tonight, then we have to come back for a last minute change. Well, I think we yeah. probably will be meeting. Tuesday one last time I because I there are I believe a few other changes but Robert was giving me the ones that we were definitely acting on tonight okay yeah there's but, other tweaks but there might not be all that substantive though either so yeah, like there, I know there was a, a typo so I don't think we need to correct that necessarily. so we do want to give you the if, final final clean right. post attorney and then right. you still have the uh, special town meeting one that's with the attorney as well that's right. He hasn't gone through that. Yeah. So I, I, I would say we should plan for Tuesday, mm -hmm. but not Thursday. So, so can, when is this going to be? Um, the final is going to be posted, and when do we get it, so that we can start? I think she's staff. hoping to get it done tomorrow, right? Jeff? Yeah, we would expect by your meeting Tuesday, you should have both, okay. both the special and the annual in clean final fashion. So, can we review it for typos and all that? Again, and the only reason I mentioned that is because we, you know, she had 5.0 and yet 4.01 right. vote was still on, like stuff like that. Can we? I don't know how we can redo it unless we, I mean, that part. Well, is that something that we can do as, because yeah. we we're supposed to be yeah. putting it but, together? Right. So, so. But we don't necessarily know somebody else's vote. We wouldn't know the vote. I we mean, wouldn't we know just, the vote. I don't well, know how were that. Well, I'm happy to when, run downtown yeah. or down, down here and just say, hey, Barbara, what do you think? I mean. It's as simple as something like that is what I'm asking. I mean, no. I don't know who reported those votes to her. Yeah. Right. You, but you could change them. If you found out it really was five to nothing, you could change it. Yeah. Before it posts. Yeah. Well, the post means before, nothing. Before it closes. Remember, I'm sorry. I mean. Before well, it closes, before anything, it doesn't matter. The only thing that legally matters as far as posting goes is the wording of each the of the warrant articles. Oh. It's not who recommended it and what yeah, the recommendations really are. That's really information That's true. Because we meeting. do that update we'll, when we we'll, sit together. I don't know where that vote came from, but we'll vet it. And See what yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you keep all this in your head, Jeff? <laughs> I write it down. Ah. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, we'll do that many times. I'm like, how is he keeping track? You can, you can go that? review this anytime you want. Live. That's true. You can That's go look at recording. Yeah. And then, um, did you guys go over the essays? Did you guys discuss that and, and assign that? Like, when? What's the deadline for the essays? Ba basically, I guess we came to the conclusion that there there will be no issues unless someone's very got one. The other night, there was no one feeling powerful about writing yeah, anything. We wrote down. I had the ones I had written down. Nobody seemed to be all that interested well, in. But anything. I might have had some. I mean. Well, yeah. if you have some, your chance, Johnny. Johnny. There, there were a bunch of items that we talked about as being issues, but as we went through it, it, it didn't rise to the, um, a level of needing to be specifically pointed out uh, in in the wow. uh, in the report this year. Kevin nicely did. I did a, see that. I was yeah. wondering yeah. why he did. Why he well, said that's that. why. I guess that's if why. If you compare what's on that list with what we contemplated this year, this year's do not come anywhere near. In importance in the lives of 10,000 people, as all of those do that cover 20 years, and I think there is a view that if we just do up something, what we'll be doing is watering down what we have done. The, there are no issues, and we, it, the town has been much better run in the last few years, such <coughs> that issues that used to go ricocheting around the community just don't occur i mean actually i think even last year to be honest that we were somewhat oh, fumbling for mm -hmm. um well, but it might be a struggle to think of something to say but i think it's a nice touch no i don't disagree no, with well, you but disagree. you, you want to make it something that people should be really aware of think about go to their elected representative and say what are you doing about this you know, here's an issue that was pointed out to you, S similar to our memorandums of findings we used to do when we stuck them in the appendix. You know, hey, the Finance Committee pointed this out to you 
Board of Selectmen or a Board of Health or whoever got elected, you know, have you addressed any of these concerns? You know, a nice touch, yeah, but if it's calories with no vitamins, yeah. what the hell? Would you have, I mean, if you have a topic, hey, whatever. I'm you know. silly tonight. <laughs> okay. I'm good. You sure? I mean, yeah, it's fine. I don't want to close you out. No, no, it's quite all right. I mean, I'll still write my little spiel. So if you have something I could put in. Of course, I haven't written it yet, but. <laughs> Any other changes to the book? You know, there were a couple. Um, we had some votes in the line item budget the other day. I saw that from Barbara. Oh, you did get that, the that? email? The email she sent okay, yesterday? Okay, did that include it? Yeah, okay, that, that included those? Yeah, okay, good. That was just the change to the, um, the facilities. facilities manager and then the merit pay. Yeah. So okay. you have that, okay, good. So you manage, good. All right. We're putting that in the book, right? What? Line item budget? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should yes. make sure you highlight some of the ch you know things that are in the line item budget. Like, some of the things that should have been highlighted, you know, anytime we, we, there's a major change I, I, in the I budget. I missed two meetings and this is what happens. <laughs> you know, when you you guys about give what, away the house, when you know? When you read about what you've been appointed and elected to, <laughs> we haven't told you about yet. I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we need you for the book. Okay. Any new business? Old business. Public access? I, I guess I, my, I got one question. So the next time we get together, will it be to review the book as it's going to the printer so we get to see your section on the budget and what it reads and what you're stating? Oh, you're really being optimistic about that. Do you guys really want to keep it till Tuesday? Sure. Well, actually, no. <laughs> we, we, we could cancel the Tuesday meeting and have it on have Thursday, Thursday instead and give you more time. I just, I would like to be have that chance to review it. Oh, you would, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, we have to, so who, is it going to be you, myself, and Jim? I'm the or, new guy on the block, right? So uh, I need uh, to Doug, understand what we're doing. This year? <laughs> we need the techie. I'll yeah, be here. Okay. Gotta and you're out? Techie. Are oh, you, yeah, I don't care. Well, you can come. I, okay. We can't have, yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. We could, we could talk after. We tried to vote you anywhere. out of that last week, Joni, but. <laughs> 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 Why didn't you? <laughs> because nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> I, I know that. <laughs> You're experienced. You're a techie. I just want things to be done. That's all. We're <laughs> almost there. Almost there. Um, almost so, there. but if but to Kevin's uh, question, if if Kevin wants to review it after we've done it, like, do we need to get together before Thursday? Is, oh, is yeah. what I'm saying. Like the three of us. Yeah, we have to go through us. the text boxes and everything. So, do you want to plan on coming yes. here? Yeah, it would probably town. be easier. Like we could be in that little room. Does you want to go through the full book or just the, the, the chairman's book? We usually go through the whole book, but okay. because the appendices matter too. Because some yeah, things you should go like through the same book because I wrote down some additions that certain people oh. wanted in there. Mm -hmm. right. Or should I remove them? No, I, I wasn't here two two meetings. What did you guys decide? No, we those, those things should still be added. You the sure? only the only thing that kind of got waylaid is issues for your consideration. Yes, that was really it. So we're getting lazy. Oh. No, 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 honestly, we, I really we, think that the general <laughs> thought was that we it, it's been a fairly, I think that Larry used the word vanilla year. The town is running much better and not to dilute our, in, our statements. Right. Yeah. Our, our shadow town manager has been doing a great right. job. <laughs> no, no offense, Jeff, he's still but new. I, w I would say, Joni, if there was something you felt strongly about, I don't <laughs> think okay, it's I'm off the table. Bad. It's all right. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, maybe actually if we wait until Thursday, we, well, because Barbara has to finish the appendices and everything, too. So Thursday instead of Tuesday. Yeah, why don't we do Thursday instead of Tuesday? Okay. Okay. So do we need Tuesday? Right. Uh, yes, Thursday. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Nine. It's 52. Hey, Jeff. Do you have a, you. like a card or something with your email address? Eight. Nine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want to give that to him? No, I was going to send him.